Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the mach -E Vlog. And this is a NAX adapter so that we can charge at a Tesla supercharger. And that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Woo, so let's go. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that I have this in my hands right now. It is heftier than I was expecting. So let's open it up and take a peek. Oh my gosh, Woo. this is very, very exciting. I love the little forward sticker and everything. I don't know, it's just, I feel like I'm unboxing jewels right now. Let's pop it down on the sweet hood and check everything. And just here. pause for one second as I get my phone because I'm gonna try to get double footage. <laughs> All right, look guys, I'm just gonna show you everything because I don't know about you, but I'm very excited. So on the box itself, it says, Dear Valued Ford Customer, I wanna personally thank you for being part of the Ford family and for joining the electric vehicle revolution ahead of the curve. The fast charging adapter in this box will unlock access to thousands of Tesla superchargers, giving you more charging options. This gift is an expression of our appreciation for your loyalty as we continue working to improve the overall EV experience. See you on the road, Jim Farley. That's so cool. I hope you all get to see him on the road. But like, it really is a gift. Like this is free, free shipping and everything. I cannot imagine how much it's costing them. But also we have here details on how to find the upgraded Tesla superchargers. We have a QR code that will obviously get us somewhere with more information and clear instructions on what will work and what won't work, the V2 and the V3 and how many kilowatts to look for. And we'll go over that as stuff. we're charging. Yeah, we'll go over this as we're charging, but nice to know that if you're worried at all, you will get some clear instructions in your adapter. Shall we open it up? Let's do it. Oh my gosh. I don't want to break the sticker. Oh my goodness. This is it. Very it's simple. Here. It's very simple. It's hefty. It feels like really good materials. I think somebody already said it weighs close to two pounds. It feels even heavier. It feels <laughs> like I could do a workout with it. And this is this is good metal. <laughs> this feels really, really solid. All right. Can you see that well? Yep. Shall we use it? Yeah, let's use it. Let's do it. A couple of tech specs about the adapter itself. It supports up to a thousand volts. It supports 500 amps for the first 10 minutes. And then after that, it's uh, rated for 300 amps sustained has a couple of temperature sensors inside so if things get too hot it'll slow down your charging and if it gets really hot of course it'll protect your car protect the charger and will stop charging shouldn't have to worry about that that's just a safety feature thankfully they have that in there um, basically we unplug plug in here and then plug into the car i think i'm close enough this is going to be an issue everywhere but let's go ahead we're going to attach that and if you're curious the order is important yes <laughs> Don't plug it into the car first. Uh, plug and charge does work. Uh, you, so you do have to have plug and charge enabled uh, in your Ford account. Give it a hefty push. I heard it the latch go. And then uh, we're gonna wait and see if it's gonna start charging. Should be at a few seconds. An EA station will typically take about a minute for it to start charging. Um, and then now the way I can tell here, cause there's no screen is my next little blue circle uh, segment in the blue circle started flashing uh, before it was like just the first two. And then now the third one is flashing. If I want to check the speed, I should be able to do that with the Ford pass app. So I'm going to load up my Ford pass app. Oh, and I can actually hear fans on that. I've, we haven't really charged at a supercharger much. So I didn't know if that would actually happen. On EA, of course, we're always listening for the, the, the fans to kick in. Uh, so I should do a screen recording, but I'm not right now, because this is a quick first one. My charge rate is 122 kilowatts. I'll take a screenshot of that though. So we got uh, 122 kilowatts, uh, which is not bad uh, on some EA 350s. Like we'll peak at 160 some kilowatts with the Mach-E. Um, we're at 44% state of charge. It says it's already delivered 1.1 kilowatt hours. Um, 
apparently like you can activate you, if you don't want to do plug and charge, you can activate it using the Ford Pass app. We'll test all of this out over the next few days in other videos. This is just our first session that we wanted to document. And apparently you can activate it with the Tesla app. So if you uh, have a Tesla and you are, you know, want to just handle your, your billing in there, um, you can activate these chargers using the Tesla app as well. There's a new update to Ford Pass. There's a new update to the Tesla app as of today that will show you the compatible chargers. And that's key because this adapter won't work on every single uh, Tesla charger. For the most part, it's gonna work on V3 and above. It will not work on V2, it will not work on urban chargers, and it will not work on destination chargers with this adapter. Uh, it will work on most V3s. It's not quite all we asked, to, like what, what is the distinguishing factor of what v V3s it won't be available on, and we didn't get an answer. Apparently it's Tesla's de determining factor, but it will be at over 15,000 different uh, charging ports. I believe it's, it's going to add 2,300 different charging, new charging locations that are going to be available to us. Um, I think the, the key factor is, is like how many it's adding because there's a lot of places, for example, that are here in Southern California where, uh, in fact, there's the one that's closest to us at the Carlsbad outlets. There's three EA stalls, uh, three EA stations there. Um, but they're right across the, the mall on the other side of the parking lot, there's 16 Tesla ports. So three versus 16, I'm really hoping that that 16 gives us some more flexibility. But at the same time, that's a relatively busy Tesla supercharger, so it may be a bit more difficult for us to charge there. Uh, so we're gonna go over a lot more of this stuff in the detail, but uh, the fact that we're gonna have all of these V3 chargers, it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, as of today, you can use the Ford Pass app, you can use the Tesla app if you don't have those updates. Another great option, the one that I've been using because it has some really, really great visuals so you can sort of see the before and after is Chargeway. It's a fantastic app. It's like uh, a lot of people are familiar with PlugShare. I like using Chargeway because of the, the visuals are in there are just so good. And what you do is uh, for right now, you can tell it to add red sevens by using their filters. They're adding very, very soon. We got a test version of the app that I'll uh, pop up and show you. It uh, says like if you have the NAX adapter, it'll show you compatible chargers. And what's great about it is, is it shows the CCS chargers in green and the Tesla chargers in red. So it's very clear so that you can see the distinction between the two and how much it improves your charging situation. So we're still charging. Let me uh, pull it up. We're going to probably end this first session just because we uh, are, want to stop at other chargers on the way home. We're about 100 miles from home. Uh, it says we are charging at 97 kilowatts and 57 uh, 50 percent state of charge 97 kilowatts 50 percent state of charge we've added 7.2 kilowatt hours um, and the reason i wanted to stop this session short is i also wanted to show you how to stop so there is no stop on the charger itself um, i could technically let me double check i haven't checked this yet but uh, can i stop here there is no stop within the ford app but we have this little button here. I hit stop. In a few seconds, I heard the, uh, the clicking that basically let the uh, adapter go. Could then unplug the adapter, close everything back up. Then I can hit the button here. Ugh. This is new. How do I get it out? <laughs> That's don't, that one. Don't force. Oh no, there's a latch here. <laughs> Do that again. See, I'm training, just showing you. There's a little latch here. Let me go ahead and show you this. You don't force it. That disconnects the Tesla cable. So now I know better for the next one. So there we have it. That's our first charging session on a Tesla supercharger. This is a 250 kilowatt V3 here in Santa Monica. We are gonna do lots more charging. I'm gonna grab the camera because I know Liv wants to comment as well. So I we're gonna, give me one second.
I just think it's so cool that there are three Maki's charging right now. It's pretty quiet. The, the whole experience of a Tesla supercharger is so new to us. Uh, I'm gonna actually have to try this as well, I think, to oh, see yeah. how easy it was to put in. Should we continue the video? Yeah, just, okay. I think so. Um, by the way, I do want to point out, uh, it does not have the J1772 pins for doing uh, AC charging. So if you thought like I have um, a destination adapter for Tesla destination chargers um, and I can get rid of that, you can't. Like you'll need one adapter for uh, Tesla destination adapters and one adapter for Tesla superchargers. So if you um, haven't seen our Electron video, uh, Take a look at that. Electron makes a, a, a really good one that we recommend, and we have we can put a link to that as well. And we will be doing a video showing the difference between the two chargers. We can show you how to use them and what use case it is as well, and show you what they're like differently because they're they're very different. But yeah, very let different. me give it a shot. All right, we're gonna let Liv give it a try. Okay, now it's Liv's turn. Let's see if she can do better than I. <laughs> but not only is this my first time using the adapter, this is my first time using a Tesla supercharger. Tesla charger in general. So uh, as we heard, you plug in the adaptive first. Let's come pop up on our charge port, flap that down. Ooh, it is an interesting cable. Ooh, I heard that first click and heard that second click. We have the spinning and it went blue. That means it's connected. The Let's next part is like, the does it go flashing blue? Uh, I think last time we took about 15 seconds. We should time it and compare Electrify America as well. There we, there go. we go. Okay, uh, that was very, very easy. Uh, not sure, if you don't know, I have damage to my left hand, so I can sort of only use two fingers properly. So if you are someone who has dexterity issues, that was very easy. Obviously, it's cumbersome to have to have something else, and this is certainly a lighter cable than Electrify America. Any cable is gonna be a bit unwieldy if it's handling this much power, um, so there's that but it's lighter, the handle was much easier. So now I'm gonna stop it. Should I let it charge for a second? Um, yeah, give me one I'm second. I'm gonna second. bring up the, see if I can see what the charging speed is now. Uh, it's charging at 113. Woo, nice. So it's, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's like the Mach-E will jump back up to a peak and then uh, drift back down, even if you've already hit that peak earlier. Anyways, uh, but yeah, I mean, go ahead gonna hit unlock hit it clicked just now and so then do the silver button silver button that's okay there we go that's a good you do have to press that quite firmly um, but you can certainly tell when it's unlatched and then as Patrick was realizing there's a little <laughs> there's a little lever at the bottom um, I'm like which hand would make the most sense I'm doing that with my thumb I think maybe maybe go like that Oh, like that. Okay, so if you hold it to your body, use your thumb and then pull, then it doesn't feel like you're gonna drop it. I like that. So then- Yeah, I was like, don't drop it on the car. <laughs> I know. And then how to put these back in. <laughs> oh, okay. That's pretty good. We're learning. Oh, I like that. Done. My first time, flap the flap, flap, close the charge port, charge door, and that was it. So it's gonna be interesting, like, how we want to keep these. Do we need a nice little bag? Where are you guys going to put this? Obviously the side of the door is a good option, but this feels like, this feels like a treasure. I'm just going to hold it. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a little bit more information on, you know, some tips on getting this off of the Tesla supercharger cable. And basically it's like, turn it sideways, do like that and it comes off very easy. What I was trying to do, first of all, I was trying to just pull. It's not gonna come off that way. If I put my thumb there, I'm like, I'm not really holding it. It feels like I'm gonna launch it onto the car, but turning it sideways, using my finger, it comes apart really easy. So once you get your adapter, quick and easy way to get it apart and you're good to go to the next supercharger. All right, fine, I came back just to tell you guys, you can get your own. If you didn't know, it's all over social media. If you don't know, you can get your own. We'll put the details down below. Um, hopefully you'll get it before May, which is what they pushed out yeah. to you around about now. But um, Ford's sending these to all current Ford EV owners and Ford owners for 2024 before next gets baked in. And I think they put a June 30th timeline, so don't wait. Just go don't ahead and, and get it in there. You have to have the blue oval charging network stuff set up in your account before you can complete this part of it. 
no big deal. But you should probably already have that anyways. And we're sharing this far and wide. We're being redundant. We're saying this multiple times because there's a lot of confusion about this. Share this with your friends if you know anyone who has a Maki uh, or a 4D V. And by the way, uh, if you know anybody in Ford Drive, Ford Drive said if you uh, are getting a car through them, you can get the adapter as well. Amazing. Ford Drive uh, is basically like short-term Maki rentals. Uh, for Lyft and Uber drivers. I think it's just Uber right now, but. Just Uber right now. That's really cool. But anyways, cool. that's cool. So. Short term is in a week, so that's good to know. Um, if you know anyone who has been hesitant to get a Ford EV because they want to use a supercharger network, let them know right now. This will be $230 when it is live on the store to buy. Uh, so you can, I mean, you save some money. But now if you have a Maki or a Lightning, you have access to the supercharger network, 15,300 plus superchargers and all of the CCS stuff too. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye on everything, on us everywhere, YouTube, social media. We're gonna be doing a lot of so YouTube, much. Instagram, threads, Twitter, X. All the things. We have a fantastic road trip plan for this weekend. A special one. A very special road trip. We won't say anything. Not yet. Um, but very pertinent to this. So if you're interested in any of this, uh, subscribe, share, like, just like whatever, you know, whatever you want to do. What else? That's it. We got to go because we're going to go have some fun. Oh my gosh. So on that note, thank you so much for joining us for this video in which we tested the official next adapter from Ford for the very first time here with Lucifer Tucifer. Big thank you to our patrons whose names are scrolling across the screen right now. Uh, Whisper, Engaged, and a Rhino. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, our YouTube members, for being members. The car right next to us just moved, and that was very disconcerting. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it's a Tesla vehicle or a Ford vehicle or not, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye.